Previously on Gaming the Systems. I spent a lot of time hooking and unhooking them up to the TV. So I started looking for ways to have all my systems stay hooked up. It seems like it would get boring, but there's just so many strategies to employ. Things that are frowned upon in other games, such as hiding, is perfectly legit here. It's time to show you the latest monstrosity I've created. Excuse me. Huh? Do you know where warehouse number 8 is? Um, warehouse number 8. I have no idea. See? He's emulated. I saved us some money. Look at him. Yeah. Shadowfall has been around since the launch of the PS4, and its multiplayer community is still very strong, filled with a bunch of diehard players. After the glue dried, I positioned all the remaining shelves. I used my games to get the spacing to where I needed it to be. You get to do all kinds of spider-like things, like climb up walls and swing from webs. You also get to do a lot of unspider-like things, like fire missiles. I pre-drilled some holes, then I drove in the screws, just like I did your mom. By some technical measures, E.T. holds up quite well compared to other Atari 2600 games. It has an ending, multiple gameplay screens, a title screen with music, and a hidden easter egg. Many 2600 games did not have some of these things. A good color for the shelves that hold my individual games. I built those shelves myself years ago to take full advantage of the space along the entire wall. It's not the most well-known Genesis game, but with 30 plus hours worth of meticulous decision making, Warsong is a strategy lover's dream. For the first coat, I ended up using foam brushes for most of it, but it went- And now the continuation. Welcome back everyone. My name is Kevin. I work a full-time job. I live in a house with my wife and cats. And as you just saw, whenever I have free time, I often spend it doing video game related things. I play them, collect them, and talk about them on this channel. Today I'm going to show you some of the game related things I've been engaged in recently. It's going to be a bunch of small segments that show what games I've been playing, devices and games I have recently purchased, and updates I've done to my game room. I'm also going to throw in one non-gaming segment in there just for the sake of variety. By far the biggest game development to happen in my home is the purchase of a PlayStation VR. Also with that, I upgraded to a white PS4 Pro. The previous launch day PS4 that I had is now in the hands of a new owner, thanks to eBay. Take good care of it, sir. You see me playing in my living room right now instead of my game room, and that's because the game room is undergoing a renovation. Having the headset on in there may cause me to trip over a paint can or something. The VR has been amazing, and has changed the way I think about video games. Most people know that the VR helmet stretches the game around you, but what's not talked about as much is how everything is in 3D. The helmet tricks your mind into thinking that you're actually inside the game. I find myself reaching out to touch things in front of me while I'm playing. I really think VR is going to change how games are designed going forward, assuming it continues to gain in popularity. The VR package I bought came with a disc that has 13 demos, and also a download code for MOSS, which is what I'm playing right here. I also got Astrobot, Tetris Effect, and PlayStation VR Worlds, another demo disc of sorts. These games are giving me experiences I've never had before. And honestly, I want to purchase every VR game that's available. That being said, I do have a vestibular disorder, which I'll explain further in a video one day. That condition makes it challenging to play certain types of VR games. I mentioned how your brain gets tricked by the helmet into thinking you're actually inside the game. But with my disorder, the mind is even more gullible. Things can become so real it gets frightening, in particular when the game has you soaring through the air, or having you walk on platforms suspended in the air. I'm talking about you, Astrobot. To deal with it, I sometimes slide the helmet up ever so slightly and take a peek at my living room floor, to remind myself it's not real. 
With some persistence though, my mind has become accustomed to the VR, so I'm having to do that peak less and less. On a side note, I also bought a non-VR game, Geometry Wars Dimensions Evolved. I'll probably have a lot of PS4 games in the future as the prices come down. This one was only 4 bucks. On a much smaller scale, I've also been playing through Advance Wars 2 on the Game Boy Advance SP. This part of the couch is usually where I do my handheld gaming, bad posture and all. Turn-based strategy games are my favorite genre. I've been playing Iron Storm on the Genesis off and on for two decades. I've also played through Warsong on the Genesis at least twice, and months ago I completed the first Advance Wars. Advance Wars 1 was a good game, but it seemed to be designed as an introduction to these types of games, so it wasn't very challenging. Advance Wars 2 is a lot more challenging, and I like it a lot better. If you know of any other good games in this genre, let me know. In the main game room, I still haven't started painting yet, other than testing colors. But I'm prepping by carefully removing posters and decals. The color will be dark red, and I'll be sure to show it to you when it's all done. In order to stack posters for storage, I have to make sure the tape on them doesn't cause them to be stuck together. One trick I learned is to tape down the tape so no exposed stickiness is left. And now let me bring you into a new room I've been working on. This used to be a storage room, but it's becoming an office slash workshop slash game library. I have recently painted these shelves gray, and I've tilted two of them inward, which will serve as a nice backdrop in some of my videos. When I first brought the shelves in here and placed the games on them, there were gaps between the shelves, which I didn't like the look of. The gaps were there because of the large feet at the bottom of each shelf. They make it so that the shelves can't be put tightly together when tilted inward. So what I did was saw off the corners of two of the shelves. The best way for me to have done that was to remove the games and then set the shelves on their backs on the floor. But I didn't want to go through the hassle of moving all the games off of them, so I just did the sawing while they were in place. In case you're wondering, yes I did accidentally saw my floor in one tiny spot. So don't tell my wife. I did my best to prevent that from happening by putting cardboard underneath them as I did the sawing. Afterward, I painted the newly exposed wood. I also did a lot of other things to these shelves while I was doing the first round of painting. On one of the shelves, the side was very crooked, so I fixed it by replacing a lot of the wood. It was a huge undertaking, but I loved the results. I also added a long thin piece of wood to some of the shelves to act as a backing for some of the smaller games. It keeps them from being too recessed, which makes it look a lot better. Although I don't think any of these shelves could fall over, I do have a safety device to make sure it doesn't happen. I made a small stack of cardboard and covered it with tape. It's basically a squishable cube. I then took a shim and wedged the cube in between the ceiling and the top of the shelf. This makes the shelves almost immovable. One regret I do have is about the paint that I used. I used a flat paint instead of a glossy, which makes the shelves a little bit sticky. When the games are on them, they're kind of hard to scoot around. It's not a big deal, but one day I may add a layer of glossy paint. 
This room is also where I narrate videos. The recliner is just in here temporarily. In fact, the narration you're hearing right now is being done from this room. I will also be doing my video editing from here eventually. On the other end of the table is a soldering station where I will be repairing some of my broken consoles. Now let me update you on some videos I've been working on. Bear in mind that if these don't turn out to be entertaining, you may never see them. One video is where me and my wife are going to read viewer comments. I did a similar video where I responded to some common questions and negative comments. And it's my favorite video on this channel. This one will be a different format, however. The comments we'll be reading will be the ones I find bizarre or amusing. I also plan on doing a video about the Ouya. I'll be showing some of the games just before and after the closing of the servers, which is happening in June 2019. Let's go back to some of my other recent purchases. I got most of these when I was out of town and found a nice, very affordable video game store. I tend to only buy games I intend to fully play one day, but I do make exceptions. I saw this cliffhanger for $2 and had to have it. Vortex I bought simply because I was curious. I know that it has the same FX chip that Star Fox had, so we'll see how it is. I don't have much faith in Blaster Master blasting again, but I can definitely see myself playing it. For now, all these games will just be tested, cataloged, and placed into my collection. And finally, I thought I should include a non-gaming thing I'm working on. Some of the screens on my windows need repaired. This particular one was damaged when a newly adopted cat decided he didn't want to live here anymore. He tore a hole in the screen and escaped into the night. No worries though, I ended up finding him and retrieving him. And now he loves living here. His name is Marcus, named after a video game character who also escaped in Detroit Become Human. So I guess this part is game related after all. I've never repaired a screen before, but I bought some screen repair tools and a roll of pet friendly screen. I then watched a YouTube video on how to do it. It's not the most exciting thing, but I wanted to throw it in there. As I wrap up the video, I just want to point out some of my previous videos. I already mentioned this one as my favorite one. It's where I respond to negative comments and questions I had about my setup. I thought it came out really well and it's kind of funny. This is probably one of my best game reviews, Spider the Video Game. I also have a set of four small videos about a GameCube I found on the side of the road. It's bizarre, but it's a true story. Thanks for watching, I'll see you next time.